Richard Sears es americano, la gente lo llama Tío Hansu. The most beautiful things about Chinese characters is their history. The purpose of my website is to find the real story behind every character. I hope that future generations can also understand the history of Chinese characters. I love Chinese characters. Chinese characters have been around for about 5,000 years and it comes from pictographs and ideographs. If you can trace the uh, characters back step by step to their original forms, every character has an interesting story behind it. In my opinion, the most beautiful things about Chinese characters is their history. I wanted to uh, study and research Chinese characters and find the story behind every character. Richard Sears es americano. Ha estudiado los caracteres chinos durante 40 años. Durante los últimos 20 años ha desarrollado una página web diseñada para ayudar a entender el arte de los caracteres chinos. Su amor por los caracteres chinos o Hanse le ha valido el apodo de Tío Hanse. Uh, I grew up in a small town in Oregon in the 1950s and 60s and it was all white. Uh, Everyone there spoke English, everyone was a Christian, and I thought it was very boring. Uh, I think I want to learn how to think in a foreign language. So I thought about what language I should learn, and Chinese seemed to be the most exotic uh, and the most difficult, so I decided to learn Chinese. En 1972, a la edad de 22 años, a pesar de las objeciones de sus padres, Richard viajó a Taiwán para estudiar chino. Pagó su propio billete de avión con el dinero que había ganado trabajando en un restaurante. It took me a couple of years to earn up money, to learn some Chinese, uh, get a wife and come back home. En 1974, Richard regresó a los Estados Unidos. Allí obtuvo su licenciatura en física y maestría en informática, pero nunca interrumpió sus estudios en caracteres chinos. I went home, my speech uh, was okay, but uh, I got to be about 40 and uh, I could barely read and write. And uh, at that time I decided, oh, I've got to learn to read and write Chinese. But there are thousands of characters and they're very complicated to learn if you're an adult. They have no apparent logic. Uh, but if you can see where they came from, step by step, every character has a logical story behind it. You can only know the logic if you know this story. For me, it was a way to learn the Chinese characters. Richard quería entender cómo se habían desarrollado los caracteres chinos. Por consiguiente, comenzó con un profundo estudio de los caracteres tradicionales y su historia, que abarcaba las antiguas inscripciones y escrituras de oráculos. Finalmente, en base a su experiencia en computación, tuvo una idea. Decidió crear su propia página web sobre la etimología de los caracteres con una amplia base de datos. Comenzó a explorar el origen de los caracteres a partir de tres compendios clásicos, la escritura de oráculos, inscripciones sobre objetos de bronce y sellos. También transcribió el primer diccionario etimológico de caracteres del siglo II, el Shou Wen Yetzi. En 2002 lanzó oficialmente su página web que cuenta con 96.000 caracteres que datan de tiempos antiguos. Esta amplia base de datos va acompañada de una explicación detallada del desarrollo de más de 6.500 caracteres simplificados. The 
the purpose of my website is to find the real story behind every character. If you uh, put in uh, the character for gold, the modern character for gold, uh, you will see um, quite a few, probably a couple of hundred um, ancient characters. Uh, but what is this? You know, how do you draw a picture of gold? Well, uh, after looking at this for a long time, I realized that this is a bell. And that gold, it's not really gold, it's a picture of something that represents metal. And the bell, uh, the musical bell represents metal. But uh, you wouldn't know this unless you had seen an ancient uh, Chinese musical bell. So I have some pictures here of the bell and you can look at the ancient characters and see, oh yes, that's where it came from. But sometimes the character can be used for its pronunciation. And so this is a phonetic. Now gold doesn't, there's only three characters uh, where gold is used for a phonetic. You can look up characters based on phonetic or on uh, significant. And you have simplified traditional characters and it will also tell you all of the um, all of the different English meanings because when you translate this into English it becomes quite complicated. You can't just say gold. It can have many different meanings depending on where it's used. Also the pronunciation, you can uh, click on it and hear how it's pronounced. Jim. This is good for archaeological people too, not just for people who are learning characters. I found a place to teach physics. It works out very well. I'm about to make a program on uh, Chinese characters. So this has actual educational value, so I like this. Richard Sears ha hecho la mayor parte de su página web sobre la etimología de los caracteres chinos en Estados Unidos. Debido al avance de su investigación, estaba cada vez más convencido de que tenía que regresar a China. I moved to Tianjin at the age of 62, and at 62 it's difficult to get a job anywhere. So in Tianjin I was uh, teaching uh, English to uh, students at home, making very little money. I was uh, living in a place for about 1,500 renminbi a month, uh, which was uh, pretty shabby. A pesar de sus dificultades financieras, su pasión por los caracteres chinos nunca se desvaneció. Gracias a la plataforma de microblogging Weibo, su interés y su página web crecieron constantemente. La gente comenzó a llamarlo cariñosamente Tío Hansel. Sin embargo, su visado estaba a punto de expirar y si no encontraba un empleo formal, se vería obligado a salir de China. Hu Yinchang es profesor de la Universidad Normal de Beijing. Encontró por casualidad la página web de Richard y estaba tan impresionado por su investigación que le ofreció un trabajo. Su sueldo era bastante modesto, pero al menos podía vivir en Beijing. Hey, Wu Jing san Hey, Richard. I see you have a treadmill here. Yeah. Are we going to lose weight? Yeah, running on it every day. <laughs> oh, good. This is the most detailed thing I've seen. Uh 
然后那时候既然爆出来说他在中国待不下去了，然后我说哎，这个我们刚好这个可以把整个研究团队的工作这样一个人来来充实一下，然后我就邀请他过来。我们学院对于学生的那个数学物理的要求很高，这个也是一件凑巧的事情。瑞说说他有个梦想，梦想就是可以不不靠教英语混饭吃，而是靠教物理混饭吃。那我们这正好是这么一个学院，他就有机会啊、呃，希望他能给我们的学生用英语来讲一下这个本科生物理阶段的课。Uh, my background is in physics, and uh, I found that when I came here, there was a place to teach physics, and so it satisfied my visa requirements, and uh, they also give me some money, and so it satisfies my living requirements. So, and also I get to work, spend most of my time working on uh, Chinese etymology, so it works out very well. 他了解一些我们都不知道的汉语，有时候他会在黑板上写一些我们都看不懂的文字，然后解释的也非常的有趣。物理上的学习，他也给我很多帮助。我们曾经到办公室里问他问题，他也都能很好的解释和回答。他很有耐心，有一种作为朋友的姿态和我们说话。Hey, There was a guy who came after. When I was in the fifth grade, I had, my fifth grade teacher had an extreme influence on、uh, my science. I would come in after school every day, and we would talk about science.、Uh, and then I came in the sixth grade, seventh grade, all through the tenth grade, and then he had a heart attack and died.、Uh, I tell my students, many Chinese students, they're very,、uh, they don't have a lot of freedom. To choose, and so I encourage my Chinese students to find their own interest. Don't just do what their parents tell them to do. Don't just do what their teachers tell them to do.、Uh, try to find your own interests and pursue your own、uh, interests. Because、uh, if you like what you're doing, then you'll be much more successful、uh, than you will if you just do what your teacher tells you to do. And. Richard enseña clases de física dos veces a la semana. Después de la clase de hoy, se dirige a un estudio de televisión para grabar un programa sobre los caracteres chinos. Disfruta la oportunidad de conocer a otros eruditos que comparten su pasión. I'm about to make a program on、uh, Chinese characters. I'm one of the guest、uh, speakers, and I、uh, chose to do this set of programs because it has actual、uh, educational value, as opposed to some of the、uh, TV appearances that I've made ha- are more like for games and stuff like that. But this has actual educational value, so I like this program. Every time we. You know, we we start out with the script, and then we add to it, and we do research, and I do some research, and they do some research, and the the guest、uh, speaker does some research, and so the the script grows into something that will hopefully be both educational and entertaining. It looks easy, but <laughs> it's a it's a, a drain on the mind. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, and so hopefully I'll.、Uh, Do the program and not make too many mistakes. Oh. 
当初我们邀请这个 Richard 来参加我们的节目呢，其实我们看中的就是他的这个渊博的学识。Richard 走进我们的节目里，呃，为我们的节目带来了很多他的一些不同的思考，呃，甚至说他对汉字的一些感悟，对于咱们中国文化的感悟。因为 Richard 呃很早很早的就买了一张单程的机票来到了中国，所以说他身上我觉得有很多跟中国千丝万缕的联系。我希望呢，他能够把这些联系、这些感悟在我们节目中展现出来。而 Richard 我觉得在我们节目中发挥的也很好。啊，给我们带来很多的惊喜。从跟他接触以来呢，我就发现这个汉叔叔确实他对中国文化确实有很浓厚的兴趣，啊，包括他做这个汉字网站，啊，包括其他方面，呃，确实他对这个汉字文化有自己的理解，啊，对中国文化有自己的理解，嗯。包括在做节目过程当中，对有些字的解读啊，啊，有些让我听起来确实非常佩服。作为一个外国人，他能够对中国文化、对汉字有这么深厚的感情，呃，投入那么长的时间、那么多的精力去专门做一个网站，呃，然后供大家免费使用的这种做法呀、啊，内心呢是对他比较敬佩，值得我们去学习。Uh, so we just finished uh, one episode, uh, which was about uh, as astronomy, astrology, and ancient Chinese characters. And uh, uh, in the United States, I, for many years, for about 20 years, I studied Chinese all, all by myself. And I had almost no one that I could talk to about Chinese characters. But since I've moved to China, there's lots of people here. There's lots of scholars who study Chinese characters. And although we may have differences of opinion about what uh, certain things mean, uh, there's lots of people here I can talk to. And so I feel very happy living in China. <laughs> Now here's an interesting character. How are things in uh, in Oregon today? Chinese characters have a beautiful story, and I hope other people can appreciate. <laughs> En su tiempo libre, Richard Sears suele pasear por las calles de Beijing. Su lugar favorito es Liu Lichang. Aquí en las tiendas de arte y antigüedades puede encontrar muchos libros viejos y otros objetos de interés. Uh, well, much of China these days looks like the West, uh, but well, this section of Beijing has a lot of uh, antiques and more traditional Chinese stuff. So if you're interested in Chinese history, like I am, and Chinese. Uh, history of Chinese characters, you can come here and there's lots of antiques and uh, uh, old books and other things that you can see. These are a Chinese invention. They are back scratchers. This is another thing that Chinese really like. And if you buy one of these for your children, uh, you'll love your children because they'll make noise all day and all night and you'll know where they are. Now here's an interesting character. This is a double xi. It's double happiness. Whenever Chinese would have a, a party or whenever they, they would have a ceremony, they would have uh, music and one of the main music instruments was a drum. There are several different kinds of drums. In the old days, they would write it like this. This was a right side of the drum, this is a left side of the drum. And always on the top of the drum, there was a flower uh, kind of thing that came out of the drum. As this drum picture changed, this top part began, began to look like this. Now we call this a two, uh, the flower on the top of the drum. And here we have a ko or a mouth, and that's actually what remains of the drum. And underneath that, we have uh, something that looks like this. This is what remains of the stand. 
So this is actually the word for drum. Uh, but when two people get married, you have two drums. And so... They would add them together. And also, they don't just have drums, they have singing. So at the bottom, they add, you have the word for mouth, which can indicate singing. And at the bottom, you have another ko. And here you have the character for the double happiness. Uh, now, this character is a little more complicated than what you see here because they simplified it somewhat and ran the strokes together. And it's a special word for happiness. It's the kind of happiness that you have when you get married. And hopefully, if you're lucky, you might have it several years after you're married. Now, Chinese people are very friendly. Uh, China is a safe place. Uh, you have very little crime here compared to some other countries. <laughs> the Chinese are very helpful, especially to foreigners. It may be a bit difficult at first when you don't speak Chinese, but after a while, after you learn to speak Chinese, then it's very uh, nice living here. In China, it's much easier to talk to all kinds of different people. You can, on the street, I can I see children playing. I can come up and ask them what they're doing, talk to them. And some people say I look a bit like Colonel Sanders of Kentucky Fried Chicken. And so uh, sometimes they call me KFC Yeye, which means uh, Grandpa KFC. <laughs> there are a few problems in China. Uh, in my opinion, the worst problem uh, with China is that Chinese honk your horns all the time, day and night, incessantly. And this is the thing I hate most about China. Uh, but. No matter where you live, there's going to be things you don't like. I like living in China. I plan to stay here for a long time. En sus paseos por la calle Liu Lichan, Richard nunca deja de visitar una vieja librería llamada Ku Ji Shu Tian. I've spent the past 20 years going to bookstores and libraries around all around China and in fact all around the world in order to find the best sources on the various types of characters. This is not easy. And you have to, the only place they can be found is in really expensive books. And the, these books cannot be found in ordinary bookstores. There's only a few bookstores in China that have them. And this is one of them. In 2000, I went to a bookstore, uh, ancient books in, near Beijing University, and I spent $1,000 on books on ancient Chinese. And so I went back to my hotel, and suddenly my uh, credit card had been canceled. I couldn't pay for my hotel. It seems that uh, the credit card company had heard that somebody in China spent $1,000 for books, and they had called my wife back in the United States. And my wife, of course, thinks nobody would spend $1,000 for books, so she canceled my credit card. You know, this is uh, the kind of things uh, that happen when you are running around the world trying to find uh, books on ancient Chinese. things in uh, in Oregon today Richard vive solo en Beijing y a menudo siente un poco de nostalgia por su tierra durante todos los años que ha estado lejos de su país rara vez ha pasado algún tiempo con su madre actualmente tiene unos 90 años por lo que está muy preocupado por ella Él insiste en llamarla todas las noches para saber cómo se encuentra y contarle cómo le va. Well, that means you're healthy. And 
Yeah, good. I'll, I'll tell that to my students. Yeah, so don't forget I love you. Okay, I'm not going to forget that. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay. Yeah, bye. Bye. She's 95. Her health has been pretty good all her life. She taught mathematics for 65 years. Uh, but now she's 95 and uh, legally blind and, and can't hear so well. So it's uh, sometimes a bit difficult, but I call her on QQ every day and talk to her. Now, when I was young, my mother didn't want me to leave home, but I went to Taiwan and eventually learned Chinese and eventually became uh, kind of known for my website. And so this last time I moved to China, my mother um, was had a much different idea. Uh, she was uh, glad to see that I had uh, uh, become a successful in the thing that I was interested in, which was uh, Chinese character. My lifestyle is kind of freewheeling. I like to travel around the world and I usually end up having some adventures. That's not the kind of lifestyle that wives like and also they don't like spending so much money on your hobbies. So it turns out that I'm not really cut out for being married. So I moved to China and I live alone. Well, of course, everybody has difficulties in their life. I have health problems from time to time. Uh, I've had four heart surgeries. And of course, I'm, I'm usually having a financial problem of some sort, but that's life. We have a Chinese saying, Huo da lao, xue da lao. That means learn until you're old, learn until you die. And so that's my philosophy. I like what I've done. A lo largo de los años, Richard ha conocido a muchas personas que comparten su misma pasión por los caracteres chinos. Yang Xingrui, Chu Mingyu y Ting Tian son todos estudiantes universitarios. Han estado trabajando en la página web de Richard junto con él durante algún tiempo. Hoy se han reunido para hablar del siguiente paso de su proyecto. Now I'm 64. Uh, some people think that's old. I don't have any children. Basically, my website is my child because I've spent so long developing it. So sometimes I wonder what will happen to it after I'm not here. And so hopefully I can find someone who is interested enough to continue keeping it up after I'm gone. My website has already become very useful to thousands of people who are studying Chinese foreigners. And also many Chinese come to my website to learn the history of Chinese characters. But more than this, I hope that future generations can also understand the history of Chinese characters. Chinese characters have a beautiful story behind every character and I hope other people can appreciate them as much as I do. I love Chinese characters. 